Olga, you get nominated twice before you're 30 years old. That's yeah, crazy. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a bizarre time. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It's, uh, it's beyond belief. It's so, it's so funny because I know how hilarious you are. I mean, everybody knows how hilarious you are from your previous films, but you're such a great dramatic actor as well. You were so good in this film. Did you Thank see the you. film? He's so good in this film. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, thank you. How, how did you get the role? Well, I, I had met Martin Scorsese at the Oscars when I was nominated for Moneyball, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm not gonna go up to him and bother him, because he's my hero, he's my actual creative hero. He, Goodfellas is the reason I dedicated my life to making films, and, and he, I was sitting right in front of him, I said, I'm not gonna bother him, I'm not gonna bother him, and I went up and I was just like, Goodfellas is the best. And that's what I said, and it was, it was really embarrassing, and I just ran back around in my seat and sat there, and I was like, no, why did I do that? And then about two weeks later, I got a call from my agent saying I was at the bottom of a list of far better and more accomplished actors to star opposite Leo in That's in, nice of your agent Wolf to say that to you. Yeah, yeah. She, you know, she keeps me humble, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, and, uh, and, and I go, oh my God, you know, even that alone would have been the coolest phone call I ever received, and so... I read the book three times, and I read the screenplay three times, and there have been a few, I've been lucky, if you're an actor, you have a moment where you read something and you have to play that, that character. And I've been really lucky in my career that it's happened three or four times, you know, with Moneyball and Cyrus and Superbad, and then this, I just was like, I... Cyrus was great, too. Thank you, that's, yeah. I, thank yeah. you. I, I love that film, and, and, I, and I knew when I read those movies I had to play this person, and the only problem with this one is everyone else more famous than me wanted to play him as well. And so uh, I knew I was gonna get to meet with Mr. Scorsese and uh, Leo, who was producing the movie and starring in it, we happened to be in Mexico promoting different films. And I asked if I could meet with him and I sat him down and I told him all about Donnie and what I thought he'd be like. And he said, you know, oh my gosh, you know, cause I didn't stop talking for probably an hour and a half. And I was like, I have to play this guy. I don't care who else gets this part, I will kill them and then I'll get to play the part. <laughs> and, and that's the way it is. And he called Scorsese and had my back and I went in there and I was so nervous and I hadn't been auditioned in six years and my first one back was for Martin Scorsese mm -hmm. and then I read for him and I walked all the way back downtown from his office. I said, if anything else, I got to work with Martin Scorsese for an hour. That was the coolest. And then a month and a half goes by where I'm dying every day because I haven't heard anything back, you know? And then I'm at dinner in New Orleans and I get a phone call and it's Leo and he says, you got it, let's go do it. And I ran around screaming and <laughs> through the streets of New Orleans and it was the best moment of my entire life. It was great. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. That's, that's a great place to learn that you got because screaming through the streets of New Orleans, no Isn't one weird. even looks at you. No yeah, one even notices. Weird. That's what people do in New Orleans. Yes, you're the most normal yeah. person if right. you're running through right. the streets screaming. Yeah, you're next to another guy running through the streets. <laughs> and you worked for scale, is that right? Yes, well, when I got that phone call that night, they said they offered you scale. And I said, S I want to sign the contract tonight so legally they can't change their mind. <laughs> that was my theory that I don't even want them to have an opportunity to change their mind. I'm so excited, and I, I would have paid him to, to work for him. You know, he, he's That's, he's my hero. You yeah, know? well, it's amazing. Yeah, he's a great guy, and he's he's a brilliant director, obviously, but he's a really funny guy too. He's got a great sense of humor. He loves doing bits, yeah. and he loves being the straight man in, yeah. in bits, and he's just he's just the best. You know, I couldn't have had higher expectations going in, and he exceeded all of my expectations professionally and personally. And know? did anything change from when you auditioned? Did you know you were gonna do the teeth and did you know you were gonna, I mean, did you already have that character that you ended up playing as Donnie? Did you have that in your head when, when you auditioned? Yeah, well the teeth were in the book in the screenplay, mm -hmm. in Terry Winter's screenplay. And uh, Sandy Powell, the costume designer, is a legendary Oscar winning costume designer. So, you know, I never collaborated that closely on what a character would, would look like, mm -hmm. you know? But with the hair and the teeth, I wanted Donnie to look like a lit match basically uh -huh. was the idea that uh -huh. he was, hair's kind of wild and crazy. Yeah. And, and Sandy Powell was so brilliant. You know, we got to collaborate and talk about how Donnie was a guy who wanted to look waspy and, and upper crust, but, but that wasn't who he was, right. you know? And so he's putting on a veneer and he's literally wearing veneers. Veneers, you right. Know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so, what was the hardest 
the hardest scene for you, because I was talking to Leo, he was here, uh -huh. and the, the hardest scene, obviously, for him was, was when he was on Qualudes going down the, yeah. the stairs trying to get into the car. Yeah, yeah. What was the hardest scene for you to do? The hardest scene for me was different. It was the most challenging scene I've ever done, but my favorite scene I've ever been in is, if you haven't seen the movie uh, Earmuffs, you know, don't listen. <laughs> but uh, uh, there's a scene towards the end where he slides me a note that says he's wearing a wire. Mm -hmm. And it's basically the end of our friendship. It's the end of everything. It's the end of everything we've built, our lifestyle. And because he's wearing a wire, we have to have this conversation about something that's completely not what we're feeling. So you can't say the words that you actually feel and you have to express everything, all the sadness and pain without using any words to, to verify that. Yeah. And it was just an amazing scene. And since Leo is so, uh, he doesn't understand that it's acting, so he beats the crap out of you for seven months when, <laughs> when the scene calls for it. And since I can't physically beat him up back because he's bigger than me, I had to use my brain to, to beat him up. And so in that sushi scene, the line was written, uh, he goes, uh, take that last piece of yellowtail and I'm supposed to eat it. And the first take, I go, he goes, take that last piece of yellowtail and I go, no, no, buddy, you have it. And he eats it. So he had to eat like 80 pieces of raw yellowtail <laughs> that night as we shot the scene. And by the end of the night, he was throwing up into a trash bin. And everyone was like, Leo, are you OK? Are you OK? And the only two people on the floor laughing hysterically were myself and Martin Scorsese. <laughs> That's hilarious. And it was one of the better moments of the whole shoot. That's Just because I got to get my friend back for well, beating me up. Good for you. That's what he deserves. He's yeah.